hello everybody and welcome back to today's live stream on my channel. The live stream today is going to be the second in my spotlight series on how to colour in jungle leaves. So I'm just waiting for other people to drop in and then we will get going. Okay, let's try and get this iPad on the same page. That's better. Okay, I can see people dropping in on my phone. If anyone wants to just pop a little comment on so I know the feed's working, that would be wonderful. I think I see Melissa's in. I think, I think. Hey, Shell. Morning. Yes, I'm feeling so much better. Thank you very much. Hey, Melissa. And Mel as well. Wonderful. Let me just uh, make sure that my iPad's actually working properly today. It looks like it is, which is a little bit of a, a weight off my mind, if I'm being perfectly honest. Morning, Christine. Hi, Hannah. So I'm just waiting for a few more folkies to drop in. So just while we're waiting, today's session is the second in my spotlight series. And today we're going to be focusing on how to colour jungle leaves. So this is a page in... 30 Days of Creativity by Johanna Basford, and we are using the floral motif page. So on this other side, there's some really cool leaves which are kind of jungle shaped. So this is the one that we're gonna be going for today. So hopefully you guys are all ready. It will be Prismacolor is the pencil of choice for today. Hi Josephine, Maria, Helen, Kay, Julie, how are we all? Thank you all for dropping in. Happy Sunday. I'm so sorry I had to put this back um, for a week. I've been proper poorly, but I'm a lot better now. So apologies for having to bounce it for a week. I hate having to do that. <laughs> Okie dokie. So before I get into things um, colouring wise with you guys today, um, there is something that I just wanted to mention very briefly on stream. Now, um, Quite a lot of things go on behind the scenes when I do any of these live streams. So at any one time, I've obviously got my phone, which is here. So I need to make sure that this is in shot. I've usually got my notes from my dummy run as well, on my notepad to the side. I've got my iPad over here, which as you know, doesn't always play. And what I'm trying to do while demonstrating live and colouring is I'm trying to make sure that I'm keeping a really close eye on all of those comments because I would absolutely hate to miss things because I enjoy the chat, I enjoy the banter. Now, the reason I'm mentioning all of this is because after my last live stream that I had, I was actually sent a message by somebody who'd been watching to basically ask me the reason why I hadn't said hello or acknowledged them throughout the live stream. If I'm being a little bit honest, I was quite upset getting that kind of message and a little bit annoyed as well, um, purely because I obviously spend part of my week with you guys, putting these together and doing this because of how much I enjoy it. And a big part of that is obviously the chat, the banter and me sharing things with you guys to obviously help you on your colouring journey, which I really, really enjoy. I'm kind of wanting to address it because I wouldn't ever want anybody to feel that they're deliberately being ignored or disregarded during the stream. The chat and the comments, as you can see, roll through quite quickly. And sometimes I do miss things because obviously I've got my eyes on this as well. And I'm trying to hold a coherent conversation with you guys and watch the iPad and make sure that the book's not out of shot. And um, you know how crazy things can be at this end. So I just wanted to try and put a bit of context into it just to explain that if I do miss you guys and I don't say hi, it's not because I'm being rude. It's genuinely just because my brain is in this page. I've been a bit bothered by that message that I had. It's the first time that that's happened. So I'm hoping it isn't going to happen again. But I just thought, let's just speak to my people about it. Get it all off our chest and then I can start colouring and I can stop having to think about it. So yeah, but yeah, Angela, it is a lot to juggle at one time. Um, it is. I'll have to send you a photograph of how the desk is set up because I've got notes that way, notes that way, <laughs> my iPad that way and my phone. So I've only got one pair of eyes. It does get a little bit messy at times, but anyway, enough of my small gripe. Uh, it's not really a gripe. It's more of a 
I'm sorry if I'm ignoring people, it's not deliberate kind of conversation, but you know what I mean. It's just one of those things that's been irking me slightly. <laughs> so I thought, let's just mention it and uh, then we'll draw a line under it and get colouring. Cool. Miss that, says Carol. Don't worry, uh, you can replay and listen to it. <laughs> it was a bit of a moan, uh, but I'm going to lighten things back up again now and get on with the colouring. So what you're going to see today is um, lots of bits and pieces out of my journal. So some of it will be colour combos that I've put together when I've been playing around with pencils. Some are colour combos from like Chris Cheng, who you know, you guys know that I follow a lot of. So there's a big mismatch of bits and pieces here. It's all going to be prism colour and possibly some sparkly pen. And I'm going to start with this little dude here and let's get jungly. Just trying to read the comments back. Oh my God. I'm like, don't miss a comment, Suzanne, because it all goes south when you miss comments. Oh, <laughs> oh thanks, Julie. And thanks, Josephine and everybody else. I know that you guys all know this and this is the first time I've had a message like that, but it really upset me. I'm like 90% made of steel and 10% soft as mush and the 10% side of me just felt quite upset about it. <laughs> so uh, I thought I'm just going to mention it and then hopefully the person who did it will pick this up at some point, if not today, when they watch it back and then kind of leave me alone. <laughs> Hi Bunny, thank you. Ah, oh, thanks Shell. <laughs> Bunny, what a lovely name, I love that. Bunny Hand, Ah, oh, <laughs> that's so cute. That's got to be like one of my favourite names I've ever seen in my life. Okay, on to the colouring, because I'm talking at 100 miles an hour because I was nervous about addressing that, if you can't tell. Lol. <laughs> so, first colour we're going in with is a little bit of Prussian green. So, PC109. Angela, the side of steel was busy fighting Derwent this week. Yes, it was. <laughs> I was not a happy camper at all. God, what a, dark, what a thing that's been. Hasn't it just been grim? <laughs> Okay, here we go. So I'm going to zoom us in very slightly more. Try and make sure I've actually got this in shot, which really, really helps. So, jungly leaves. Lots of greens, but a really good excuse to use lots of different colours as well. So because this little guy has got a bit of a border, I'm going to go around this with the Prussian green just before I start making some of the sort of detail marks and stuff. But yeah, the, the Derwent thing, um, that's been quite a slog. So for those of you that don't know what's been going on, there was a Jubilee offer on over on um, social media of um, with Derwent last week for the Jubilee weekend. And the offer said one thing, but actually meant something completely different. So long story short, without getting into it too much on here, because it's, um, you know, a long story, I've managed to sort it out. So everybody that's been affected by it um, should be getting resolution in the coming week. I'm waiting to hear back from them actually tomorrow, um, which is going to be interesting because it's my first day back at work after being poorly, so <laughs> I'm going to be really busy tomorrow. But um, yeah, it's been a bit of a week. Hi, Angela. Sorry you were late. You were feeding the cats. Yeah, that's okay. I think we're all happy that your pussy cats are nicely fed. Bless them. You can't concentrate if they're meow and asking for their dinner. <laughs> Angela, who's just popped on, will know all about what's happened with Verdo. Uh, and we've had um, quite a long conversation about that, haven't we, Angela? <laughs> right, now I've outlined the edge of this. So I'm going to start making some sort of linear marks now with the Prussian green. So following really the angle of the middle of the leaf that Johanna's given us, I'm just going to start to bring some sort of longer lines through now. So at the top obviously be a little bit shorter because there's not a lot of space here we're just tapering these off at a similar angle to this detail in the middle yeah do you feel that you can talk to me by the way um i hate it when the comments dry up and apologies again in advance if i miss any of them <laughs> hashtag awkward hashtag moving on hi claudia claudia in chile how wonderful. Who else have we got in the house today? So I know that we have some uh, some USA. I know we have some GB as well. Hello there, Gail. I mean, it must say chocolate for Gail. There we go. That's got it done nice and quickly. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to carry on. Hi, Liz. 
your granddaughter's third birthday. Oh, happy birthday. How lovely. I hope she got lots of lovely things. So I'm just going to carry on with the Prussian greens. This is just layer number one, so it doesn't matter where your lines fall. And it's just a way of giving the leaf a bit more of a textured appearance. Thanks, Shell. I appreciate that. It's the first time that it's happened to me. Like, I've never had anybody send me anything to say. Um, the polite version of... Um, kind of why have you not spoken to me on stream so I was pretty much taken aback by it to be honest it's not certainly not the norm but equally although I was upset and annoyed by it you know equally there's a big part of me that that worries that's the 10% non-woman of steel part that worries that there's anybody else out there that watches my streams that thinks well I'm not really going to be going on her streams because she never speaks to me can be really difficult because when the conversation's flowing of course the comments just whip past and right now I'm I'm looking at my page I'm not really I'm sort of glancing every few pencil strokes at the iPad for for bits of movement and stuff but I'm not you know if I was glued to the iPad the whole time there'd just be no colouring done um and I'm pretty sure that your desire to watch me would decrease somewhat because you just spent an hour listening to me drawing on <laughs> You did miss something, Annie. Listen to the replay, my honey. It was uh, me having a little bit of a a little bit of a vent, but it's done now. But yeah, I don't I don't ignore people, so you know it's just yeah. Right, so that's the base layer on. So at this point, you can pretty much add any other green in that you would want to add in to start blending things out a little. So. The one that I've got down in my journal, the next colour I used was an apple green. So we're a few shades obviously lighter than the Prussian green, which is good for it to start blending the Prussian green out a little bit. Oh, morning, Alexandra. Oh, thanks, Angela. <laughs> I do try my best. <laughs> so with the apple green, what we do is we start to go either side of that Prussian green nice and gently because we don't want to obliterate everything, but we do want to start blending things out. But at this stage, we are going to keep ourselves with some white space because we're going to use a third green to kind of do the overblend job, really. So same pencil stroke. You'll see that I'm not really rotating the pencil terribly often, um, just enough to sort of keep a reasonably sharp point over just nice even pencil pressure and then we leave all of this middle bit for the magic to start happening. Catherine's good thanks Alexandra she's just nipped off out for a bit of a walk she's already said she'll bring me a coffee in at five which is lovely. Um, she has actually not long vacated this table um, she's in the middle of her next model which is a um, what is it it's a lifeboat that was it what am I being asked colours you used in your tutorial in Magical Jungle. Yes, this has come out of the Magical Jungle title page, Annie. So I am kind of recycling, but um, with this one, it's quite versatile because you can pretty much group any two or three greens together. You're just picking three greens that go from dark to light in tone. You can even blend some yellow into it. So we will do some um, that you may have seen before. We'll do some that hopefully you haven't seen as well. But it's just to get everybody in the jungly mood. And then if you've got Magical Jungle, you guys can just use um, these colour combos or these techniques just to kind of zhuzh your leaves up a wee bit. Because they don't all have to be green, which is ridiculous because this one is green. But you know what I mean. Some of the other ones won't be all green. Wah! Come back pencil. Literally juggling it. But yes, yeah, Catherine's good, thank you. She's, uh, she's just out for a little walk. Okay, so we've got our mid-tone and our darkest tone green. So I'm going to be using Chartreuse as the blend over colour. So this is 989. So 989. And then what we are going to do with this one is we're going to do some reverse blending. So we're going to saturate the white space that we've left. And then with a similar pencil stroke, we're going to go back up the way into the darker and the mid-tone greens. So a little more of a firm stroke with this one and you can see that we've still got the Prussian and the apple green showing through 
it's just that this is getting blended over. Um, no, Angela, this isn't Magical Jungle. This is 30 Days of Creativity. So I'm kind of using this book as a bit of a project book for doing little bits and pieces in which I'm really liking. Josephine's liking this combo of greens. Yeah, I like it as well. We're going to make it pop in a minute with the, the middle colour as well. And again, this one's really versatile. So, for example, you could have done the Prussian green, the apple green, and then done an overblend in pale sage. That also looks nice. You could have done the blend that I'm doing now in the yellow chartreuse, lime peel. You could even do it in a yellow or a cream. Anything that will blend into the colours that you've already put down. So you could even do a jungle leaf in blues with this technique. What smells saying? Did anyone else think the octopus had Homer Simpson look before the goggles were put on? Did he? What, my octopus? Is that what we're talking about? My one? I'm going to have to look now. Surely I didn't make it look like Homer Simpson. And if I did, it was completely non-intentional. Where's the page gone? I'm going to have to look now. Oh, potentially. <laughs> it's more Marge, really. I would say, although well, he'd need blue on his head for that one. I don't know. <laughs> Alexandra likes to do lime peel and the yellow. Yeah, so depending on what colours you're putting together, I mean, you have um, some blues that are more on a purple spectrum. You have some blues that are more on a green spectrum. So if you use your colour wheel to look for three colours to put together, as long as you're blending um, similar sort of spectrum colours together this will work so you could do it with pinks purples blues reds um, anything like that but we'll look at some of the combos anyway once I've done this one because there won't be many more minutes on this little one now and then we'll move on to something a little bit different so I'm just gonna have to kind of smush that bit at the bottom together there's not a lot of room to uh, to blend out so what I always do is go back in then with my darkest tone one so I'm gonna go back in with the Prussian green and with this one, I'm just going to sharpen up the outside edge here that we coloured in at the very start. So I'm just going to go all the way around that just to neaten this up very slightly. But yeah, this is a very versatile technique. So I'll show you with the colour that I'm finishing it off with as well. It will become a, bit, a little bit clearer. So same pencil stroke, I can see, even though I've mushed everything together, I can still see where that Prussian green was on that first layer. So I'm just going to go ahead and resaturate that. So you probably do want a slightly sharper edge of your pencil, a bit more pressure at this point, because of course you're going through two or three layers of wax pencil, so it becomes a little bit more tricky to kind of get the colour to come onto the paper. So let's do this side as well. I'm glad I did this one in this uh, pattern. I was kind of deliberating which of these leaves I was going to do it on. I'm glad I chose this one because it's the best shape, really. Joanna makes the octopus look like Marge Simpson, yeah. <laughs> it was funny, actually, when I was um, doing that on stream last week and I put, added the sparkly pen on, I thought, oh, my God. God, I've given it swimming goggles that is not a good look oh well we'll have to go with it now so sometimes things evolve in a way that you don't really imagine that they're going to and that was one of those moments it's like I've made it look like it's gone in, in a swimming pool recreationally with goggles on that's quite ridiculous <laughs> so the final color coming on this one is raspberry so a nice rich red color so this one you could do with anything. You could use one of the um, ready browns, you could put blue through it, uh, you know, pink, whatever. Um, for this one, I'm gonna be using this raspberry, so I'm gonna just saturate the middle here. Angela hasn't worked in 30 days yet because it scares you. Oh dear, Angela, I'm assuming that you haven't read the brief that came with the book. The idea is, that it encourages you to become creative and there are no right or wrong ways of doing anything. So my challenge to you is to whip your book out and have a little play because you'll enjoy yourself. And what I like about this book is there's so many little twiddly bits of things that you can dip in or out of depending on where your mood is taking you. 
And it's a really good little activity book just when you want to do a bit of something, you know. What's Alexandra asking? What do guys find easier to blend, wax or oil? Ooh. I don't find any one of those. Um, I don't know what the rest of you think, because I think Alexandra's asking the question of sort of all of us really there, but I don't find one easier than the other. They're just different. Angela did read it, but was still scared. Don't be scared by 30 days. Just dive on in. If you're feeling worried about it, you've got the tutorials that I did on the water page that you could have a bit of a bash at. You've got this one as well. So maybe follow along for your first bit of a page and then see how you feel. So still sticking with this raspberry, I'm going to add some little red lines over the top as well, just to bring the main colour from the middle into the main body of the leaf. So this is where if, say, you'd got a jungle page and you've got loads of like red flowers around, you could tie your leaves into your flowers by using the same colour that you've used for some of your blooms into your leaves. But Sally Ann saying it's winter in South Africa. Prisms don't perform as well in the summer. That's interesting. We're just starting to get um, quite warmed up and stuff here. It's it's quite muggy here today. I haven't noticed any sort of. I mean, we don't really get well. We do get some extremes of of heat and stuff here, but I've never really noticed that the pencils going sort of funky on me. Might be something to keep an eye out for. There we go. So that has just zhuzhed it up a little bit. So what about the white space on the leaf? Which white space are we talking about, Laura? Have I missed a bit? I don't think I have. Hmm. Okie dokie, let me see which one we're going to do next. So let's do one that's got some other colours going through it. So I'm going to go for um, this one here. Let me just get these colours out of the way. Um, so this one we're going to work from the opposite way. We're going to work from the inside out. So a little bit of Prismacolor cream. It looks like there's seven coloured bits. Hmm, I wonder if I haven't quite nibbled the, the chartreuse just into the edges. Maybe I should put my glasses on. <laughs> Might really help me at this point. Put your glasses on, Susan. It's patchy. Uh-oh. <laughs> I just put them on now while I think about it. Oh, that's a big leaf, isn't it? Really need to learn that being over 40 means that you should have your glasses on when you're doing recreational reading type activities such as this one. <laughs> okay, back to the cream. No criticism, just no, it wasn't intentional. I just didn't have my glasses on, Laura. <laughs> Thanks for the reminder, they were like sat right there. <laughs> I do this all the time. I'll be holding something like so far that my arm has practically run out of room and Catherine will be like, do you want to just put your glasses on? <laughs> I'm like, oh yeah, maybe I'll do that. So with this one, we're going to work from the inside out. So taking the midline of the leaf here and we're going to add some cream in and we're going to leave some white space at the edge. So. You can just vary how much of the cream that you're adding in, a little bit more, a little bit less. Just stick into that midline. Let's just squeak a bit into there as well. Glasses work wonders. Yeah, they really do. <laughs> Quite ridiculous. When I was getting ready, ready for this, I wrote some stuff down because I've got notes that side of me and notes that side of me. And um, I'd got it like on my lap, but right over there and I couldn't see it. Catherine's like, for God's sake, babe, why don't you just put your glasses on? Oh, yeah, let's do that. I do it all the time. All the time. And then I put them on and it's a whole new world. <laughs> oh, dear. So, sort of medium to firm pressure here. We want a nice coverage of the cream in the middle of the leaf. And then what we're going to do is work some other colours into this. So do keep asking any other questions that you've got. If I've missed bits, tell me. Um, whatever. I'm keeping a little eye on the stream. Because we all know what happens when I don't. <laughs> oh, Dick Catherine obviously knows best. She usually does and she's out of the house, which is the only reason I'm agreeing with that sentence. <laughs> 
She'll be like, you cheeky devil. <laughs> Okie dokie, let's grab a bit of lime peel. Lime peel was mentioned a few minutes ago and it's a green that I really, really like. So lime peel, so 1005. And what we're going to do now is work from the outside edge in again with a similar pencil stroke to what we did on this one down here. So let's start at the top. Make sure that we've got some coverage of the lime peel sort of in at the very edge. And then we're going to mirror the lines that Johanna's given us when she's drawn this with our pencil strokes. So I squeak this into the edge and then just make some lines. And again, vary the length of the lines depending on how you're feeling and things. Is that somebody encouraging Angela to have a go with her um, with her 30 days? it's funny isn't it so we all do it we get a book and then we panic about um ruining it and stuff but, you know i do it as well to be honest it's just kind of getting past it isn't it, it can be difficult but what i love about this is that is the fact that it's you know a project based book so you can dip in and out of different things as and when you want to which i really like yeah that's it shell think about 30 days as a workbook for practicing different techniques that's why i'm using it really for this spotlight series because the pages that she's given us are perfect really for this kind of thing so keep smishing that into the side there you want a nice sharp point for um, something as sort of tight as this is coping mechanisms buying an extra copy yeah i've heard a lot of people say that and would you believe the only book i've bought a second copy of is enchanted forest because that was the first book that i started um coloring in as an adult and when i sort of finished it oh it was shocking so um it went and i've got a new one <laughs> so i'm slowly starting to redo it again I'm not one of these people that keeps um, hold of something that I don't think is, is particularly good, it goes. Um, but yeah, I haven't done anything in Enchanted Forest for ages, actually. It makes me want to dig the book back out again. So concentrate on what you're doing here, Suzanne, because you're going to end up colouring the leaf next to it, which is not the plan. Another copy of Magical Jungle. I know I was tempted, Annie. I may get another copy of that, actually, because I love the pictures so much. I would like to do it again. Um, what other one am I going to use for this one? So we'll do some moss greens. So the greens that I'm using for this one are kind of more of an earthy tone. So if I show you these as a comparison, so I'm trying to keep sort of like greens together. You have greens like these two, which are more on the yellow spectrum, really. And ones like this, which are more earthy, a little bit of like a browner green, um, like earth tones. So I try to keep the greens like this together when I'm doing leaves you know with a pattern like this one so take a bit of moss green next so this is a 1097 morning Shannon how are you thank you for joining so we're going to do the same again so pick out some areas where we're going to add some slightly darker lines in so I'm going to push this into the edge like I did for the lime peel and I'm not going to go over all of the lime peel because I still want that to show through. And again, I'm having to push just a little bit harder here um, with this one because we've got already got a layer of the wax pencil down in this bit. What's Alexandra saying? Secret Garden was the first. Yeah, I didn't get that as my first book. Um, it was Enchanted Forest. I must have missed the boat on uh, Secret Garden. So again, just using the line art really is the angle for working the pencil. So I'm just smishing a bit of it into the edge here. I'm just trying to keep my hand out of the camera shot because that's not massively helpful really, is it? So get a nice sort of earthy tone going down here. And then I think what we'll do is we'll add some brown into it as well. Just going to sharpen up along the edge here. Yeah, thanks for tuning in um, today, you guys. And sorry about the moan at the very start. It's just been really sort of bugging me. I needed to get that off of my chest. 
I'm glad I did actually. I can. I hope you can probably hear in my voice I've settled down a bit now I've got that out of the way. I think I was talking at like 3 million miles an hour. Which I do when I'm nervous. I don't know. So carry on down the side with this one. It's funny, you know, I've been doing these streams with you guys now for... When did I start doing them regularly? I think it was something like January 10th last year, I want to say. It might have been 2020. I can't even think. It feels like ages. And I still get nervous before I come on, which is ridiculous. Hey, Carol Knottsborough, are you all good? Yeah, sorry about that. I'm in mini syndrome. Right, let's do some... Let's do some light umber. Um, I think I've got a nice new one. Yes, I have. I've got all my little twiddly bits um, for most of these colours because they're the ones that I use the most. So I've broke out some of my new pencils. Light umber. I have to go back and watch the beginning, says Alexandra. Yes. <laughs> oh, dear. Hashtag awkward. Oh, it's fine. It's fine. So this one works really, really nicely with these greens because of the earthy tone of them. So you could use other colours on here that are like a brown tone. So you could use the chocolate pencil, managed to get that in again for Gail, lovely. Um, you could use some of the darker browns if you wanted to. What I'm going to do is add a pop of a, a different colour green over the top just to sort of finish it off and give it a bit of zhuzh. And I'm going nice and gently with this because I don't want to obliterate the greens that are sitting underneath. I just want there to be a little bit of a pop of the brown coming through. So if you've got a page with lots of leaves, of course, like you have in, in Magical Jungle, um, and you're not wanting to sort of flower match them, um, like with this one, for example, this is kind of a good generic colour palette to use for, you know, lots of different areas. But we'll do some more funky ones in a minute or two. So we'll do a couple of like the normal ones first and see how we get on. So let's go for some dark green, which is a proper, proper new one. So excuse the noise while I just pop it through the sharpener. Oh, which is absolutely fluffed all over the desk. Are you joking? <laughs> oh my God got a crotch that's covered in pencil shavings oh dear lord let's uh whiz the hoover out i'm sorry about this guys <laughs> oh my days crotch full of pencil shavings <laughs> i'm just gonna come back and go what the hell have you been doing <laughs> there we go dear lord there's never a dumb moment is there <laughs> So on with dark green. I'm actually blushing. I just said crotch live. Well, no, that's not good, is it? <laughs> what a point to join us as Catherine. <laughs> yeah, you just pop straight into the live stream at this moment just to hear me say I've got a crotch full of pencil shavings. <laughs> I was hoovering the desk though. <laughs> Josephine wasn't on it. Let's just leave it there. Let's just leave it. <laughs> I wasn't hoovering my crotch. I was hoovering the desk with this. <laughs> Oh my God, uh, I want an ugly laugh. I'm just about holding it in. Right, <laughs> so dark green, oh my God. Could this stream be any worse at this point? Dear Lord, right, I'm just gonna add the smallest little pop of a different green through here. I can see you guys all laughing. Who was sharing? Let me scroll back, what are you all saying? Three crotches, says Catherine. That's the first hoovering of my crotch. Well, it may or may not be, but we're not discussing that. Angela says it could have been worse. <laughs> I designed to think it's awesome. I have a little a little hoover near me. I do. It's called a tea hoo And it's so cute. It picks all like the raisin bits and clearly sharp ones out of everybody's laughing. Stop laughing, you lot. <laughs> I'll have to play this bit back for Catherine. She'll be like, what on earth are you talking about? I don't know. <laughs> ah, what a time to join in. So if there's loads of uh, newbies that have never been on my lives before, welcome. This is the usual depth of uh, madness that you get on live with me. <laughs> 
I don't know. That was funny. Brilliant way to start my Sunday and it's not even 9am. <laughs> I don't know, that was funny. That was very funny. I don't know what happened because the drawer's in. How on earth did that even happen? Carol, this star 133 is going in the naughty corner after this one. <laughs> case so that is like a more sort of generic jungle leaf that you can do let's do something a little bit more funky now and um, that doesn't involve sharpening any pencils again for the rest of my life let's do one that's got some nice blues in it or shall we do yeah let's do the blue one first so I'm just wondering which shaped leaf would be the best one to do this on let's do it on this one here this is real, raw and healing. Life is messy. It certainly is when you dump your sharpness contents. I'm still examining. Oh my God. It's just ridiculous, the amount of stuff. Oh, never mind. Okie dokie. I went in the flame blue. Dear, oh dear. Certainly is raw and messy on this end. That's all I can say. Right, I'm gonna sharpen this on the desk. And then hopefully, seriously, you dribbled bits out again. Wow, this uh, this this doll's in serious serious trouble. It's going for a to. Okie dokie. So we have a little bit of Indian Throne Blue. So two zero eight. Time out for the doll. It's definitely going for a time out. Definitely. So this palette is one that I came up with on a page where I'd used the Indian Throne Blue. Uh, in a flower and I was wanting to try and coordinate my leaves with my flowers which is something that I do an awful lot so this one's a bit more of a, like a funky leaf really so we're going to start from the centre midline again again following the line art that Joanna's given us and we're just going to start applying nice and gently some bits of the Indian Throne Blue going up so make sure that we've saturated the midline properly Notice a lot of the comments have actually stopped now, probably lost half the stream because they heard the word crotch and thought, oh, I'm in the wrong place. <laughs> it is a colouring thing that we're doing, can assure you. No, it's just a slight sharpener malfunction. Dear, oh dear. What shall I say? In working on a picture, adding pink to some spots on leaves. Not sure if you like it. I think the funkier the leaves, the better, actually. Um, I really like doing leaves that aren't, you know, your traditional greens and stuff. I am going to do um, a half pink leaf, I think, for you guys. Catherine says, still here. Good eye. Bunny says, still here as well. <laughs> I hope it's not your first time watching me, Bunny, because you'll be like, wow, this is ridiculous. <laughs> You, Alexandra's waiting for Stickman to pop back up. Oh, he's never too far away, is Stickman. He's always around. So nice, gentle pressure with this one because it's such a rich colour. A little of this goes an awfully long way. We just want to make sure that that centre midline there is nicely saturated. Ah, Bunny normally watches replays. At least you got some other comments as well with it then, Bunny, and not just it on replay. My uh, YouTubers are going to wonder what the actual uh, hell is going on with me today, I think, when, when they get around to watching it. Oh, dear. Never mind. Funny. I'll have to tell Catherine when she comes in, she'll cackle with laughter, I would imagine. And give me a what the hell look on her face as well, I would imagine. <laughs> right, we want some cloud blue. Um, where is cloud blue? There it is. So heading on for some cloud blue, so 1023. It's really hard to get the silver font to show up under the camera. Hi, Carol. So what we're doing with this one is we are doing um, an initial blend over to this Indian Throne Blue layer. So we follow the stroke of the pencil nice and gently. And we take this into some of the white space above, but we leave ourselves with a pop of white along the edge, along, it's not a word, along the edge here. 
so nice and gentle and you can see that the cloud blue over the top of this one actually makes it a really really funky colour I love it so I'm just going to blend backwards that little bit just because it's at the edge of the page it just makes it that little bit more tricky <laughs> oh no Catherine I hope everything's okay so I'm just going to go ahead and do this all the way along same on this side so it just smooths the pigment out a little bit and kind of changes the color it's really pretty so a lot of the blues actually the powder blue because you have three of these light blues within a set of prism color and they all act a little bit differently um, slightly different tone when you use them to blend over blues and, and purples as well these these work really nicely with as well so it's always worth having a bit of an experiment on a piece of paper just to see which one sort of has the nicest look. There we go. Am I done with you? Yes, I am. So now we're going to introduce some of the green in. So I'm going to go for um, a very sort of neutral green because we're going to be blending over um, a different colour over the top. See the shot now? but it was just one little bit I'll let you away with that dear oh dear so I'm gonna go on with some Celadon, Celadon Green what a weird name for colour so 1020 and what we're going to do is the same thing pretty much but in reverse so we're going to work from the outside edge in does it need to be empty do you know it's not that full there's bags of room in that drawer I don't know what is going on actually I will empty it after I've finished just in case it normally behaves itself really really well it's just uh it's just uh testing me this afternoon so what we're going to do is blend so where you've got the little bits in between we're just going to nudge this solid and green in between so we're trying not to take it over the edge of the blue too much we're just aiming to fill in that white space that we left at the edge of the page so this will sit quite nicely over the cloud blue but so that we don't end up muddying the colours, we're really just aiming for the white space around the edges here. So we keep rotating the pencil around to really saturate the colour at the edges here. So I'm just going to swizzle that round slightly. So how are we doing? Quarter two. Means it will be coffee time very, very soon. Just got to be a good thing. Love Alexandra, I love that I'm not the only one that talks to my art supplies like they have personalities. Well, the look I've just given this sharpener has actually spattered it around the room. Um, yeah, but um, yeah, occasionally. <laughs> Angela likes that combo. We're not finished yet, I so hopefully you'll like it when I add the last layer over the top. So this um, Celadon Green is a bit of a weird colour, but it's really nice as a base. So sometimes when you're colouring things and you've got a really strong colour to go over the top or maybe use like a base of a cool or a warm grey one or a putty beige to sort of mix a colour into for greens this one works really really well so I'm just going to make sure I have actually nudged that into all of the white areas there we go get rid of the bits and then what we're going to do now is add a final layer in from the outside edge which is going to be some peacock green Oh no, why do you need sharpening as well? It's like conspir Are you lot conspiring against me today? I'm sure they are conspiring against me. Oh my God, babe, guess what just happened? So I just sharpened a pencil and this thing dropped all the shavings right in my crotch, which meant I've said crotch now four times, no, five times live on air. No, there's not on the floor. She's looking at the floor now. No, I'm there's... just checking. I don't need you to check at the moment. I've sorted it out. Thank you. <laughs> no, I'm just checking if you needed me to get the hoover out. I've got my mini hoover right here. Ah, okay. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> so, peacock green is the last one. So, 907. Shell says hi. Hello. Angela says hi. Mm -hmm. So, we're going to do exactly the same as we did this way this way now with the night sort of darker green over the top so I'm going to start up this corner here 
So again, we're not aiming to run this into the blue. We're just aiming to run this over this celadon green layer. She's gone out now. She's probably worried about being uh, attacked by my sharpener as well. Oh dear. <laughs> Blooming thing. It's not even that full. Never mind. It gave us something to giggle about, didn't it? And then what I'm going to do just to finish off is just resaturate that Indian Throne blue layer one last time. So if you'd got a um, some blue flowers, you know, whatever blue that you've you've done in your in your flowers, you could do this with. You could keep the cloud blue overlay as well as using the celadon green and the peacock green and just substitute it. You could even do it with purples. So this again is another really versatile way of uh, sort of making your your leaves match up with your flowers and things depending on what page you're obviously colouring. So I use this palette on the Magical Jungle title page. And um, it's one that you'll see me sort of use again and again really with but with different colours. I'm having to push quite hard with this one because I've put quite a hefty layer of that celadon green down so it's just sort of nudging the uh, colour into both of those layers there we go so just make sure that we've not missed anywhere and then we will sharpen up the middle Ioana super something let me see if I can put translation on it super cartoons the translation is I'm probably sure that's not what she means but I'll say thank you very much <laughs> So I'm just going to go back to the Indian Throne Blue again. Julie says, oh, I'm loving those colours. It's really versatile. So you can do all of these with different colours, really. So when you're tackling your pages in Magical Jungle and you're thinking, I don't really want my leaves to be green. Well, they don't have to be. And this just shows you a way of, sort of nudging other colours in your pencil case into the picture. So I'm just going to resaturate this through. It's impressing nice and hard now because we've got multiple layers of, of wax that we're trying to push this colour into and you can run this Indian Throne blue up into that into that green colour because the peacock green is actually um, like a, on the bluey green palette rather than the yellowy green palette like this one is so of course it will work quite nicely together. Beautiful Suzanne. Great colours for winter or the Christmas book. Yeah, maybe so. Um, I have done this actually with reds in the middle, which looks pretty sharp. Oh, hey, Sarah, how are you doing? So I'm just going to make sure that that midline's nice and saturated with colour. Trying desperately to keep my hand out of the shot. So we can just nudge this. And then I think we'll do we'll do something purpley next. So I'll have to turn the page over in my in my journal to find the one. I've bookmarked it to find the one that I want to show you guys. There we go. So three very, very different leaves with really not all that many different colours. So let me just pop some of these away. Um because the table is looking like the zombie apocalypse of pencil at this point. Those ones are okay because they're propped up against my eraser. Right, let me just grab the other pages that I've got little taggies on and see if I can find the ones that I'm thinking of. I think it was on this one. Oy. Such a big notebook, this one. Absolutely gargantuan. All right, let's have a look. So we said we were going to do some purpley ones this time, didn't we? So, specs back on. Just going to have a little slug of my juice. Oh, that's better. <clears throat> that's Annie saying, love how you match the tips of your leaves with your flowers. Yeah, it's um, something I enjoy doing. I feel it brings the picture together. It's more co cohesive doing it that way. So what do we want? Some black cherry. 
Oh, you don't need sharpening. Thank goodness for that. So let's have a go at some of these little ones here. So slightly smaller leaves. So we'll go in with a little bit of black cherry. So this is 1078, really quite deep sort of purple. And what I'm gonna do is add some bits of that in different places on these little leaves down here. So let's put a sort of lighter edge towards the top of them. Just sort of vary a little bit where the purples go in. Let's take a bit of that at the side of that one. So just vary this very, very slightly. So obviously because this is an exercise where I'm sharing loads of different palettes with you, the picture itself is not going to look it's not going to look terribly cohesive because normally I would have sort of matching colour schemes and things in different places. But, you know, for the purposes of demoing something like this, it's just easier to just sort of crack on. So there's me talking about nice cohesive pictures. This one's going to look like someone's regurgitated colour all over it. But that's what we get for, uh, for doing an exercise like this one. So I'm just varying slightly where I'm putting this black cherry layer let's add just a small amount at the top of that one I'll put a bit more down here because this one's a bit more in the dark I haven't really sort of done anything about shadowing or anything around these leaves either because that's really not what the workshop's about it's just more about giving you some ideas for different ways of tackling your jungle leaves really so I'm hoping to see loads of lovely work in Magical Jungle or actually any of your other books with some really adventurous leaf palettes. I hope that this workshop's given you guys a little bit of inspiration as well as a bit of a laugh, <laughs> which is something that I always try to achieve. Obviously it's um, better achieving it when not covered in pencil shavings in an unfortunate area, but you know what I mean. Hello. Yes, please. Toasted marshmallow. Thank you. That's Catherine on the coffee run. What's everyone else want? What's everyone else want? I bet Alexandra's the first one that puts a comment in. Might be Annie, don't know. Let's see. Watching my iPad just to see who's first with the coffee orders. <laughs> it's all gone quiet. Oh yeah, it was Alexandra. Caramel, please. <laughs> What's all cold? Oh, definitely cold, it's too hot. Shell says a dirty chai latte. Hmm, not sure what a dirty chai latte is. Shannon just wants a latte. Mel wants a chai or a hot chocolate. Angela wants Baileys. Is that what I've pushed you to? <laughs> she <laughs> wants Baileys. Cappuccinos, hazelnut lattes. Gail will probably want something with chocolate in it. Gail Kemble, if you're still here in the background. <laughs> right, let's grab the blend over colour. Yeah, you've got several orders, so see you tomorrow. <laughs> Keep busy for a bit. Yeah. <laughs> right, what colour are we on next? I've completely lost my mind now. Right, powder blue. Powder blue. Now I know I've got a little twiddly powder blue in here somewhere, which I'm going to use. So I'll show you guys the full sized um, spare that I have in here. Okay, it says yes, with chocolate, please. Yeah, we can do that. So powder blue is the next one. Just going to pop that away because I've got a little dude um, sitting here, which I will I will use. So I'm just going to put it in this sharpener because it's too tinky for the other one. Oh my God, I'm hooked. It's coffee. <laughs> I love the dirty chai. I'm going to have to Google that. I have no idea what a dirty chai would be. Um, yeah. Okie doke. Let's just check that we haven't got a wobbly tip. No, we haven't. Where's my extension chap gone? There it is. Okie dokie, what do my notes say that I do next? I overblend the hole in powder blue. Let's do that then. So we'll do an overblend. So when we're overblending, keep your strokes in the same direction as your base layer. So we're going to go all over the purple. Oh, half chai tea, half coffee. Oh my goodness. See, that would be a, a, a non-starter for me because I really, really don't like tea. Probably one of 
hardly any British people that literally can't bear tea. Um, the smell of it makes me feel sick. Never had a cup of tea in my life. I think the only way you'd get me drinking a cup of tea is if I was bribed with a serious amount of money. <laughs> but Catherine loves her cups of tea. Hi, Amy. So let's over blend this little one. It's going to swizz around this way. Amy doesn't like tea or coffee. I used to be the same until I was about 26 and then I fell down the Starbucks um, rabbit hole of, it was their white, what was it called? A white mocha something something. And I used to only have a half shot in there. I mean, now I drink like strength seven, strength eight coffee um, without even flinching. I, I honestly don't know what I was, I know what now what I was missing for the first 26 years of my life, but I love my coffee. Absolutely adore it. So let's just carry on with this over blend. There we go. So we've blended over. So this is the second of those three light blues that we were speaking about a short while ago that blend really nicely over other colours. And what do I want now? Marine green. Marine green. Uh, are you marine green? I think that's you. Yes, it is. Let's have another shorty, but I don't have my new one out of my box yet, so I'll have to just demo with this little shorty. So this is marine green. Everyone thinks I'm weird, says Amy. Oh, everybody thinks that I'm weird because I don't, um, I don't drink tea, but I, I just can't bear it coffee on there but I'm a bit of a coffee snob now like it has to be freshly ground <laughs> no instant in this house <laughs> so with the marine green what we're going to do is apply some of this in in random places over the top of that blue layer that we've just done so I'm going to go to the tip here and work this backwards so I'm going to leave some of the areas with that little pop of blue Let's just leave a little blue edge on that one. We'll do the same with this one. And then at the end again, we're just going to resaturate. Um, what colour was it again? The black cherry. Honestly, thank God for um, my notes and all these things next to me. My brain's just mashed about the uh, conversation we had at the start and then the pencil sharpener disaster. <laughs> So let's go in a little bit darker with the green under this one, just as if it was in a little bit of shadow. Do the same for this little guy here. Yeah, hopefully this has given you guys a little bit of inspiration. I may do a little more work um, on this, maybe tomorrow evening. It depends how I how I get on with my first day back at work tomorrow, because of course, um, being off sick, um, I left it's different isn't it when you're off sick it's unplanned so you don't go off work leaving your all your ducks in a row so all my cases are going to be in not in a pickle but I'm going to be a bit behind myself so I'll see how I feel tomorrow before I, I commit to doing anything else um but for those of you on here it'll be available over on YouTube anyway so I'll make sure that I let you guys know sort of um how the land's lying with that there will definitely be a multitude of cups of coffee tomorrow most definitely there we go so now we just go ahead and resaturate that black cherry layer so just show you that color again it's really nice rich purple color and it just looks beautiful with that sort of baby blue color over the top and it just washes the color out very slightly so whenever you do an overblend like this we just go in for another go and just resaturate everything there we go. It's such a pretty little combo. So this works really nicely on, um, you know, bigger leaves and things as well. Let's see what we've got. Sorry, to hear I've not been well. Thank you. Yeah, it was, it was proper poorly. I'm feeling a lot better now, though. The only thing I've got to show for it is a slightly manky hand where the um, hospital were attacking me with needles and things, which was slightly unpleasant. Um, but I'm feeling much, much better. I think sort of like today and yesterday was the first time that I was feeling more myself again, which is good. What's Angela saying? 
got a friend's coming around for colouring day after work tomorrow. That sounds so much, so much fun. Donna says, looks lovely. Thanks. But it's just about playing around with your colours. So these three light blues that you've got, they will sit really, really nicely over purples, other uh, blues, pinky purples as well. They'll sit really nicely over the top of. So just play around in a sketchbook with some of your different pencils and just see what sits nicely over the top. And then you can do um, things like this really, which look nice and effective. Oh, thanks babe. Can you take this off for me and then I'll swap. Thank you darling. That's uh, Catherine bringing me my coffee. Mm. Oh, yum, 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 yum. Didn't realise I'd been in hospital. I was only there for a few hours. It was just um, via A&E, so I wasn't in as an inpatient, so to speak. Thank goodness. But, um, yeah, three visits in four days, which was uh, slightly unfortunate. But I'm definitely feeling better now. Thank you, guys. Yeah, that looks good. I'm quite pleased with that one. Nice. OK, so which one should we do now? Let's do another like greeny blue one. So I'll just pop these ones away. Um, so where on earth did marine green come from? So you're in there. Black cherry normally lives there. So what colours do we want now? Just bear with me, you guys. Oh, apple green, great, because that's already on the desk. Oh, let me just scroll back. Thank you, Teresa. Catherine's good, thank you, Fran. Hugs from Julie, thanks, Julie. But yeah, I'm good now. I'm getting there, thank you. <laughs> so, apple green. Um, this is well used, all the colours rubbed off. I can't even, I think, I want to say this is 912. How bad is that, that I know the number, even though it's rubbed off? I'm sure it's 912. But apple green for the first layer. And I think what we'll do is, let's do this on... Just wondering which leaf this would work the best on. What about if we do these little funky guys at the side here? But yeah, back to work tomorrow. Boo! <laughs> so, my notes say make lines in apple green. So if it's lines, is that going to be... I'm not going to do those ones. I'm going to do these ones. I think it's better. What's Moira saying? Lovely tones, you've inspired me to get my colouring books out again. Well, that's good to hear, Moira. So, apple green. So, I need to leave some white areas on here. So, let's let's come down the sides. How many colours am I using on this one? Uh, three. Yeah, that's fine. Let's do that. Yeah, hopefully. And I know, you know, it's easy to lose your mojo as well. Um, you know, I get there as well myself at times and I don't know what I want to colour and you're just not feeling it. And sometimes you'll see a bit of something and it just makes you think, oh, I really fancy colouring. Um, I've done an Olivier Odoran tutorial in the last week or so and I wasn't sure what I wanted to colour at all and I couldn't settle on anything and I saw that particular video on her um, patron and it just really sort of got my imagination going again and I've just finished yesterday a page which I'll share with you all properly tomorrow um, and I don't think my imagination would have gone as wild if I hadn't have been sort of in the zone which is what Olivier's tutorial did, it just got my head back in the game again which was lovely so uh yeah i'll share that one with you guys tomorrow it's in worlds of wonder so what are we talking about shan and i have nights two blocks from the baghdad theater and it's fun and really good coffee oh is this a coffee shop we're talking about wonderful i'm hoping next weekend to go to my favorite coffee shop for breakfast on one of the days have to uh discuss that with my bird hopefully she will be um up for that as well is that the balloon in front of the world yes it is angela finished it off i actually finished it off last night and i'm well chuffed with it so i shall put it up on the socials tomorrow it was a complete experiment so believe it or not i've wrote nothing down that i did literally nothing so um, color combos 
forget it like some of the blues I'd recycled from a couple of my other projects the castle with the tree with the eyes in it as you all christened it um, but uh, the earth I didn't write anything down which was an error of judgment I think but I'm not sure I'd be able to recreate that again actually <laughs> yeah one of those ones where you're like oh my god did I do that I'm quite pleased with it so non-photo blues coming next so this is another one that's worn off 919 I think that says so non-photo blue looks amazing it looks good now Angela I'm dead chuffed with it dead dead chuffed with it I'll maybe grab it off the desk and give you a cheeky peek of it before I put it up on the socials tomorrow so I'm going to add some of this in and leave some white areas again because that's what my notes are saying to do you know it's all very well keeping a journal it's not so good when your notes become incoherent though <laughs> just looking at the key what on earth is that telling me I need to do <laughs> so funny I need to get a system in place I must have been rushing because I've wrote like a, a list down sometimes if I've got a project on the go and I don't journal it if I haven't got a notepad or something next to me I'll just sort of barrel on with what I'm doing and then I always regret it I think I can remember some of the colours I used for the earth I think I think I think I think so let's leave some little pops of white because that's what my notes are saying so nice steady hand here I'm popping this into the apple green it's sitting quite nicely it's not going muddy or anything we haven't really got a lot of room to play with with this little tiddler at the bottom but I'll pop a bit of the blue in so what's the next one powder blue is that this one Seven. Is this one eight seven? No, it's one eight six. One eight seven. One eight seven. Let's use my little. I'll use my little tiddler one in my extension, and then I'll show you the proper one. Now the blue. I have a nice, brand new one sitting in my case, ready. And what we're going to do with this one is we are going to overblend everything. Yes, overblend everything. So we'll go in the same direction as the pencil strokes. What? How rude. Bro, breaking live on air. Tut, tut, tut. Although it's not as damaging as the sharpener instant, so I think we'll just let it away with it. So overblend everything. So I'm going to go in the same direction as the pencil strokes keep looking at the comments when they stop a panic in case my phone's got like the black screen of death coming on it so where are we we're just before 10 past so we'll see if we've got time to perhaps do one more and then I will cut and run because you know what tends to happen to me on here when we get into too far beyond the hour it goes a bit bonkers and usually kicks me off so we'll over blend everything I will show you that picture before I finish. You'll have to um, excuse the glare though because I've already covered it over with that protective film that I use. But yeah, I'm gonna put it up tomorrow. There we go, let's just get all these bits away. And then uh, some dark green. Again, I've got another little guy going, so I'll grab the new one to show you guys. We're just so amazed by you, says Angela. <laughs> no, I like the chat. Just keep it coming. It's great. <laughs> I panic when the chat dries up. And there's us having this conversation at the beginning saying there's a chance that I miss some of you. And now I'm like, please put a comment on. Ooh. Let me just sharpen this one. See if you break on me. It's going to be big trouble. Big, big trouble. A little tiny little tiddlers anyway so I've bought a bigger pencil case so that I can have like um, all my little tiddly ones in a certain place and then put the new ones in the slot I'm just gonna have a little slug of my coffee mm. oh that's delish mm. right so dark green coming now so what we'll do is add in 
slightly darker green on top. Alexander had never thought to use a light blue. That's the thing, it's just playing about with colour um, and just changing the way that the leaves look and layering things up. Um, it just adds a bit more something to the leaves. Because I don't know about you guys, but a page when you're confronted with nothing but leaves and stuff, um, I find it really kind of demoralising if there's hundreds of them. I, I want to make them sort of look a little bit more exciting and a little bit different. So some of these colour combos are literally just me playing around um, in a, a cheapo sketchbook, just layering different colour combos to see how they look together. Um, and that literally I've just flipped through my journal and found some of my old colour combos that I've really liked and I'm just sharing them with you. So the basis for this one came from Chris Chang but they're different colours. Um, so I think the first time I used, I did a leaf like this it was on a Magical Jungle page and it was one of her tutorials that I was following. And I wrote down how to do the technique and then of course you just replace the colours with different ones of your own. And that's what I'm hoping that you'll be able to do after watching this one. What's Kay saying? I have trouble with leaves, so really inspired. I know, leaves can be difficult, can't they? And flowers as well. I think one of the ideas when I was asking people for, you know, what they wanted to see in these spotlight tutorials, one of the things people were saying was, could we do leaves? Could we do flowers? Could we do water? Um, you know, blending, stuff like that. So... We'll try and factor some of these things in that people are saying that they struggle with. I'm not sort of saying that I'm an expert in, you know, everything because I'm not. Um, there's still plenty of learning to be done myself, but I'm more than happy to spend some time with you guys, you know, each week if I can um, and sort of pass on some of the bits that I've picked up. So I'm just going to keep him rotating this because it's such a teeny tiny space. I really don't want a blunt edge I'm trying to get a bit of detail into these tiny spaces so you really do need a sharp point and he's saying leaves and flowers are my favorites I got to the point where I was all flowered out um I haven't done sort of lots of flowers for a while but we will do some there we go so that's some of them um, I'm just thinking if we've got time to squeeze one more in, which is on the other page in this book. Let me see which one I've tagged. That one. So Annie will recognise this one when I do it because you've done, um, I think, the page that has this one on it. Um, so let me just see what else I need. Pale sage and blush pink. Pale sage and blush pink. That's pink rose. That must be that one. I'm sure it's that one that's the blush pink. I'll just hold it against my swatch. Yes, it is. It's because all my favourite ones are all teeny, teeny, tiny. <laughs> Let's give these a little sharpen. Annie struggles with skin. Yeah, me too. Despite all the hours of uh, Chris Chang's that I've done trying to get it into my pea-sized intellect, I think what I'm going to do is use what I've learned from doing that a couple of times recently to try and simplify it so that I've got something that I can put together quickly without spending hours and hours on a video that, that I can then communicate to you guys. But that's something I'm going to need to sort of work on. Right, which leaf's going to work for this one? This one maybe? Or this one yeah let's do this one here so let me just swizzle that round slightly so we have pale sage so 1089 another teeny tiny one and we have blush pink which is 928 your skin's fabulous eyes I can do um, eyes are not a problem hair not a problem Getting the contours of skin and the shadows really, really difficult. So thank God for people like Chris Cheng who've covered it so that I can have a go at it that way because I genuinely would have no clue otherwise. But I appreciate the compliment. Thank you. So with the Pale Sage, um, we're going to do this leaf half and half. So I'm going to use the Pale Sage coming from the outside in. So 
just sort of following again with the pencil stroke the same direction as the line art that Joanna's given us. And I'll just come down. So this will be the last leaf that I do with you guys today. So just giving you the heads up that I'm going to bring the stream to an end in the next few minutes. And then I will either carry on with this in here on another Sunday or if I'm not absolutely shattered after going back to work. I may do a quick evening one, but I will let you guys know what the plan is as soon as I know what the plan is. Let's let the pale sage down. I'm just going to do the same now with the blush pink. Am I pressing harder on the edges? I guess a little bit because I'm trying to make sure that I've saturated all of the um, edges really of the of the leaf with the colour. So yeah, maybe a little bit. Um, so let's do the same with this one. I'm going to start to add this down. So yeah, I think I do press a little harder actually at the outside edge of the leaf. Um, just purely to get the colour onto it. So I'm just nudge some of this through here and down here as well. And just be careful I don't drag all the pigment from this little guy over into this one. So then we are going to grab a white. Just going to make sure that um, this is actually clean because it looks like I've got blue on the tip of this one. So I must have been doing something with water or something. And you do need a sharpen, so this, uh, this sharpener better. I don't even think about cutting the new bits. Uh, you've learnt your lesson, that's what you get for being in a long time out. So a little bit of white coming now. And we're going to just overblend the whole thing. So just go backwards and forwards. And it smooths these edges out. And just flattens out all of the colour. And it just means that you've got a nice layer to add your other colour into. So do the same with the pink. Just try and flatten this out as best I can. To make sure there's no pink on the tip. No, there's not. And do the same with this one. So just back and forth. Smoothing everything out. And then of course we're going to use slightly darker shades over the top. And this is another way that you can get your leaves and your flowers to sort of tie up with each other. So if you've got pink flowers, you can do pink leaves and things. So a little bit of apple green. Just going to get a better tip on this one. Oh, you little devil. There's me thinking that you've learnt your lesson and you've just fluffed everywhere again. Right, so apple green again. I don't know why I'm showing you because you can't even see the number. <laughs> it's that well used. So over the pale sage. So um, a little sort of firmer pressure towards the outside edge of the leaf here. And then using these black lines as a guide for the shape of the pencil stroke. We just start to pull a little bit of that colour down into the midline. So just make sure that you've got it right into those corners. So similar to this one really, but just with different colours. What's your pressure with the white? Quite firm, um, because what we're trying to do is completely sort of encapsulate the colour underneath the layer of white so that we can detail straight over the top. So nice firm pressure with the with the white pencil. So the same on this side. I nearly started adding the green into the pink layer then. That would have been a complete error and would also have looked quite bizarre. Um, so funny. So I'm just being a bit careful next to these because I don't really want to drag the uh, the pigment from these darker ones down into into this bit here and just get rid of these bits and then let's go for some processed red oh it's a conspiracy why do you all need to be sharpened and the sharpener's not caving today oh my 
goodness. Note to self, check the colours that you're using before coming on air and sharpen them all. It's a little bit of process red, so 994. And we're just going to do exactly the same as we did with the apple green layer. So push a little bit harder into the edges here just to get the colour in and then just start to pull that pigment down into that nice blush pink layer. And of course it sits over the white really nicely. There we go. And then on this side as well, we've got so little room here so I'm just going to sort of add like a bit of a token line in there and just pretty much block colour this little bit in here and the bit at the edges there as well. There we go. Let's maybe just pull a little bit more of this down so that it matches the other side a bit better. There we go. So, several different ideas here for jungly leaves. So I've obviously got a few other um, bits and pieces. I have got some other palettes um, set aside to show you for some of the other leaves and stuff. So we'll definitely sort of dig into that in another session. But I'm going to kind of quit while the going's good before it ends up kicking me off. I'll we'll just go and grab Worlds of Wonder real quick so I can just show you that page. This is not the page, by the way. This is just another one that I started working on this afternoon. Um, let me just find it. Make sure that I'm zoomed out properly. There we go. Mm -hmm. ah, it's on the back of the camel page, isn't it? Okay, so excuse the glare. I'm just trying to angle it this way so that the glare is not too bad because it's been covered over in the film of course so we've got quite a sheen on it but that's the one so I'm going to be putting that up on socials tomorrow so I won't have enough time by the time I've messed about with tonight's video and everything but yeah that's that's it so this was a complete complete experiment this page has been done in ink tents and Prismacolor so this is all ink tents with Prismacolor overlay. This is ink tents with Prismacolor overlay, the same with the water. Um, the balloons are just Prismacolor with um, sparkly pens, which I can, can't really show you now that the film's over the top. And then you'll notice that the palette that I put together for this little house was on that other page that was in on shot a couple of moments ago. So yeah, I had a kind of idea in my head for this one but I wasn't really sure how I was going to tackle it and then a fit of inspiration hit me and I thought just dig in and have a little go <laughs> oh thanks guys what's Nikki saying my daughter's just seen the colouring and says you're incredible well, tell your daughter thank you very much very kind <laughs> what film do you use says Amanda I actually have a tiny piece of it in my desk so I'll show you that real quick before I finish up so it comes on a roll um, I get it at WH Smith's in the UK so it's um, clear self-adhesive sticky book covering so one half of it has got these squares over the back um, and the other side is obviously shiny film so what you can do is you can use the squares to cut it to size and then I use a ruler to smooth it over. So there is um, a video of this, how to apply this on my YouTube channel. What I would say, Amanda, is um, practice before committing it to a page in your book because sometimes if you get an air bubble trapped underneath it, um, it can be a real pain in the backside. I'll show you one page that I've done in here where that actually happened, which I was heartbroken about. But do you see here where there was a a bubble under here and it's all raggedy that's where I've tried to sort of chop it out but once it's on it's on so I'm usually 95% uh, of the time I get it on bubble free completely bubble free but that time was just a disaster so you can imagine how much I was holding my breath when I was applying it onto this one this morning so like, please don't get any bubbles and there wasn't any so yeah that's the film that I use and I just keep the little bits like this in case I do um cards or anything that need to be sort of layered over depending what I'm sticking but 
Yeah, you can get it on Amazon. I think they do like five or ten metre rolls. It's not very expensive. The backing paper is recyclable. Um, but yeah, that's what I use. So I hope you've enjoyed that. Thanks for your company this afternoon. Sorry that it's kind of started out with a bit of a discussion about something that I wasn't sort of massively happy with. I just felt I needed to say something about it because it was bothering me nearly two weeks after the event and when something's eating away at me like that I just need to get it off my chest so thank you for listening and thank you for being here I obviously appreciate every single one of you that tunes in every time that I come on live you know if I didn't have you guys tuning in I, I simply wouldn't be doing the videos because there would be no point so you are all very much appreciated um and yeah, I hope you have a good week next week. I'll let you know when I'm going to be finishing um, this little bit off because it's only ever going to be a snapshot of a technique. So hopefully you will um, enjoy that. I can see a few of you saying, I'm not going to have green leaves anymore. Good for you. Have blue ones or purple ones. <laughs> and I will put up on socials the next time I'll be about. I may not be on a week today because it's Father's Day in the UK. And I may have pipped my brothers to it this year. So if I can get my dad round here for Sunday dinner, although he usually likes to eat at lunchtime, so I may have time. Once I know what I'm doing with my dad, I'll let you guys know what I'm doing. But um, it may be a fortnight today, the next time that I'm live on here with you guys. So yeah. Anyway, I am going to go now before the stream cuts out. I've got loads of sharpening trashings all over the place that I need to <laughs> clear up. So uh, I'm going to crack on with that and drink the rest of my coffee. So take care, you guys, and I will see you again very, very soon. So I'm just going to nudge this out of my phone stand. I'll give you one last little look at the leaves. And it's bye from me. Take care, everyone. See you soon.